hello guys you're welcome back all right so welcome to this amazing video in this one we're going to be transforming this background entirely from the scratch and it's going to be very fast very easy and very very efficient and the beautiful part is that you're also getting the background this is the background we're going to be using you're also getting the background for free with other free backgrounds we're going to be giving to you so if you want access to the backdrop just go to the description of the video click on the link there and you'll be able to download it all right so without wasting much of your time let's quickly get started the first thing we need to do of course is to crop the image so i'm going to crop it and give it a little space probably up and down just to make sure that the space i have there would accommodate the size of the backdrop then i'm going to turn on my content where i'm press ok so that it fills up all those orange borders that is by the end all right so Having done that, the next thing is to separate your object from your background. So we're going to, of course, use our select subject. And once the selection is made, right click to select inverse. Then go around to know if your selection is done properly. So I'm noticing uh, this stuff she's holding on her hand in her, uh, in her hand is not properly selected. So we'll just refine that. Uh, this area, her clothes is lost as well. Beautiful. So you need to check the floor to make sure the leg is not, look at that. All right. So I know you might be wondering how we're going to fix this area. Don't worry. I'll show you a very quick way of getting that area blended in because if it's not selected, then it means it's going to be a problem. So the next thing I need to do is to separate the object from the background. So I will, drop, I will duplicate this, then right click and go to layer via cut. So I have my object on a different layer now. And I have my background on a different layer. So now make sure your object layer is above the background layer. Next thing we need to do is to plot out the background. So we need to reload the selection. Then go to filter. Go to blur. Go to gusher blur. So being that it's not dirty and all of that, we won't be blurring it out too much. We use it somewhere like 27. Then I'll make it, I'll press Ctrl D to deselect. Now at this point, you can decide to even tone the background down a bit. So I feel I need to tone it down a little bit. So I'll pick up another solid color, a darker gray this time around, and still change the blend mode to color. So that we'll just have a little darker shape over there. This, this, this is not working. Let's try multiply. Beautiful. I think I prefer this. Just need to bring down the opacity. All right. So with this down, of course, all these are all customizable. This is why we are creating them on separate layers. I did not reduce the brightness from the layer direct. I created a new one so that we can control what it looks like at the end of the day. So we'll go over to our background. I also have to crop the background to also be the size of the image I already cropped maybe somewhere around here because we don't need the whole background. We just need this area. But I'm going to unlock the layer, use my move tool and drop it over here. Once that is done, hold your alternate to scale it in. Beautiful. So you can decide to scale it in and just leave it like this. I like this cinematic approach that we have here. It looks like the background didn't cover the whole entire area. So we'll just make it look slightly more bigger. Yeah. Then press OK. Now we need to change the blend mode from normal to overlay. So you notice that overlay just looks natural. Just looks perfect and natural. And this is why we created this second layer over here. Okay, so if we didn't create this layer, this is what it could have looked like. So we need to also darken this up, creating another curves layer above it. But because of this one we already created, it brought down the luminosity of the background and the background is properly represented. Now, the question is, how do we blend the object to look like she was really here why shooting this image because if you look at it right now you'll notice that the color is not matching so what do we do very simple go to your object layer go to your color balance then clip it on the object yeah so looking at the background is you know generally warm and overly warm so what we'll do is just pushing warm tones into the object look at that and immediately is looking like she was standing there when it was lit Another thing we can do is to make a duplicate of our background. We thought this, this particular one in our Facebook channel, you can as well go there to understand this technique very well. But let me use it here so you will see exactly how we did it. So make a duplicate of this background. 
take it all the way to the top, right? Keep it here, then go to your filter, go to blur, go to Gaussian blur. You need to blow it out until it becomes a color filter. So we blow it out until there is no detail in it again. It's just blended color gradients. Now you need to clip it on the object as well. Then change the blend mode to soft light. Now you need to reduce it. So you see the way even the blue on her dress is beginning to assume that warm tone. Look at that. Beautiful. Now you can even decide to bring down the opacity of your color balance to also make her stand out a little bit. So the second to the last thing we are going to be doing here, of course, uh, I'm not so sure because we need to see it to work on the shadow, is to blend this area in. So if you notice, we are still seeing the original backdrop from the nets on her dress. So I'm going to create a mask for her dress, pick up my brush and reduce the opacity or the flow. So this one is already in nine, which can work. Make sure you are using a black mask and just do a very casual uh, minus it. Let me use that word. So I'm just fading it out a little bit. So you notice that immediately, let me turn on the mask and turn it off. Look at the before, look at the after. So it now giving us that transparency that it has. You are seeing the background through that area. The next thing we need to do is to create a global color gradient that will bring everything together. So I'll go to my uh, color lookup table. I just immediately look for a color lookup that will allow us have a very beautiful image at the end of the day. I love the contrast at this point. You just need to tone it down a little bit. Beautiful. Look at the before, look at the after. So we can as well decide to darken the highlights of this a little bit. Then lastly, I'll go to my filter, go to camera roll. So I need to create a little vignette effect for the background so that only the center is more bright. Just to bring attention to the whole image, to the center of the image and not this whole artistic effect competing with the image. So we'll go to the effect and pull down our gradient. Yeah, of course, this is too much. Then we'll make sure that the midpoint is in the center, exactly where she'll be standing. Beautiful. Then decide to feather it out even more. I'll just make it a bit more intentional. Let me make it a bit more intentional, my feather. Yeah, like that. Then you can even restore the highlights on these areas if there are highlights. Let's see. So we don't have highlights in this area. So we'll just leave it. And maybe lift the gradient opacity a little bit. So once we press OK, you'll notice that the whole attention immediately goes to the middle. And this is how you do it, my friend. So let me show you how we started. This is the before. This is the after. This is the before. This is the after. Very easy, easy peasy. Just follow the steps as, to, as we did. So in case you did your own and your shadows didn't show up just like the way mine showed up, all you need to do is just go straight to this uh, layer where your background is, create a mask for it, pick up your brush. Now you might need to paint with 100, 100% and just restore that, that area where the shadow is supposed to be. And immediately you will have the shadow. So look at it without mask. So you see there were shadows there, but well, immediately I painted it up open it even gave it more contrast on the shadow, thereby making it look even more realistic. And this is how we do it. This is the before, this is the after, this is the before, this is the after. Do not forget, if you want access to this background, you go to the description of the video as, as well. Yeah, just there, you go to the description of the video, you'll be able to see the link, click on it, and you will download this background and even more backdrops that we're going to be giving out for free thank you so much for watching do make sure you turn on your notification bell and if you do turn it on uh you will be sure to be receiving notifications on all the videos we are going to be dropping this period and it's going to be mind up mind blowing one more time thank you so much see you on the next one